Now give the floor to uh, Director Amon. Director, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much and uh, good morning to everybody. Um, I'm happy to present uh, uh, the key messages from the two documents that we have published today. Um, as mentioned uh, by the Commissioner, we are seeing an increase of cases in the, um, uh, across the EU countries. And apart from the increased testing that contributes to the increase, we are seeing uh, in several countries a progress from local transmission to uh, more sustained um, uh, community transmission. Um, as mentioned, uh, the um, uh, large number of uh, uh, the cases right now are among younger people, which uh, comprises the age group between 50 and 49, uh, 15 and 49. And although these, uh, these, uh, uh, this age group has a lower probability for severe cases, severe cases occur in this age group. So uh, uh, among the cases reported to us in the past four weeks, 44% of the severe cases were among this age group. And what the other concern is uh, from our side is that uh, uh, this um, increasing transmission in this age group may also uh, go over to uh, the more vulnerable older age groups in our, in our uh, population. Uh, in our risk assessment, we have um, grouped uh, or the risk um, um, uh, that we assessed. Um, for this risk assessment, we have grouped the countries in three groups. So there is one group of countries with stable trends um, that include a lower proportion of uh, elderly uh, uh, not, uh, cases among elderly. A uh, lower proportion among, uh, of severe cases and a low proportion of death notifications. And for this group, the risk is considered low. For this group of countries or areas in countries, because uh, I um, haven't mentioned that, uh, that uh, although we are talking about an increase, it's very different situation for the different countries and even in some countries within the country. So the third, uh, the second group that we are uh, looking at is um, uh, uh, cases with uh, uh, countries with concerning trends, and here um, uh, uh, these countries are characterized by high and increasing notification rates reported due to increased testing, um, and the transmission is still primarily among um, younger age uh, groups uh, with a low proportion of severe cases and uh, low death notification rates. And here the risk is moderate. The last group is uh, countries with trends of high concern. And these are countries um, that have where we see increasing notification in older cases. Uh, increased proportion of uh, hospitalized and severe cases, probably due to this uh, higher um, notification in older cases. And we're also, also seeing in these countries increasing or already high um, notif death notification cases. And here the risk is high. Um, and for the vulnerable uh, 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 individuals in all these countries, the risk is very high anyway. So what can be done? Um, uh, in principle, we have to uh, control the transmission uh, among older children and adults younger than 50 years of age, and I can go in more details um, um, uh, uh, afterwards. We have to ensure that th those that are social, uh, socially and medically vulnerable are protected. And we have to protect our healthcare workers. So these are the three things, the three objectives that need now to, to um, uh, be, be, be implemented. As the commissioner has mentioned, we have uh, published uh, together with the risk assessment, also a document on non-pharmaceutical interventions. And the reason is, as uh, already also mentioned by the commissioner, that in the absence of a vaccine, this is the basically the only tool that we have. 
in this document, uh, there's nothing new. So we haven't come up with any, any new measures. However, we have uh, put together all the evidence um, and the knowledge uh, that has been gained over the past month, where these measures for the first time actually um, has, have been applied in a, in a large context. Uh, we have put this together and the idea is that um, countries, due to the different epidemiological situation in the countries, can now go and have a look what will work best in their specific um, uh, context. Now, while these measures may have a certain variation, depending on the epidemiological analysis in a country, there are certain measures that have to be in place everywhere all the time. And that is uh, sufficient testing capacity, uh, rigorous contact tracing, um, and a good um, a quarantine for contacts and a good risk communication. And this risk communication has to be tailored uh, to different parts of the population in different ways. So we have uh, on the one hand, the general population um, that needs to be um, made aware why these measures still have to be in place for physical distancing, wearing a face mask if this cannot, uh, the distance cannot be kept, and uh, staying at home when having symptoms and pro uh, proper hand hygiene. And that their contribution is really essential in order to control the pandemic. But then there has to be a, a communication addressed to the vulnerable population. Um, because uh, they also have to give them their means uh, uh, how to protect themselves. And the last uh, group that needs to be addressed separately are the younger ones. Because uh, uh, some behavioral studies that have been uh, carried out uh, make it very clear they feel themselves uh, in, invulnerable and have no concerns that they could uh, actually transmit any, any um, uh, uh, disease or the virus. So the, 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 these risk communication efforts have to be really stepped up to ensure the compliance uh, um, uh, to the measures that countries have to put up. Um, I close it here uh, because um, uh, I would like to uh, uh, leave enough room and time for your questions. Thank you. Indeed, going to open the floor for your questions.